What's going on everyone? Welcome back to YGOPD or Yu-Gi-Oh! Professional Development and today I have something really neat to share with you guys. A couple months ago in June I did a combo guide, a little bit more in-depth look at the punk archetype. I want to do the same thing for Virtual World just because there's been some new support that's kind of indirectly buffed the deck over the past couple of months that I think is really good to cover and just gives a refreshing look at the deck, both budget and maybe non-budget options. But of course, before we hop into it, we'll go ahead and give a huge shout out to our new subs of the channel. Michael's Comics Corner and Jesus, thank you both so much for joining the channel. If you like what you see and want to stick around, please do consider subscribing and leaving a like. It really does help. And with all that said, we won't waste any more time and we'll go ahead and hop into the virtual world combo guide. Okay, so we'll be looking at a few different things. Of course, you'll see some different archetypes blended in along with this because I think most of you are familiar now that Pure Virtual World, it does a lot, but I think there's a few archetypes that do a really good job that get splashed in and open up a lot of doors for the deck. So I'm going to do a few basic things to remember as well as kind of a deeper dive on some of the different synergies between the more modern archetypes that you can splash into this deck. The first one being just general discard reminders. So the biggest thing that I think Virtual World has an advantage in is discarding throughout its combos or wanting cards to be discarded, having both Virtual World names in Grave to bring back with cards like Lao Lao or having good things in hand that you want to discard when you search with cards like Ching Long. Uh, so the easiest thing you can use to utilize that are a couple things here. The Punk Engine um, is a really easy way to discard. Cards like Forbidden Droplet are a really expensive way. Still, even though it got reprinted, that you can utilize that discard to get Ching Long or different things in the grave, as well as the Adventure Package. So um, all three of these are just really good different discard options to put different names in the grave through the Adventure Package, through the Virtual World Package, or through the Punk Package. Right now, all of these are a little bit cheaper as they start to come down, but still a little bit expensive, at least for droplets, um, but at least Adventure and Punk are kind of slowing down a little bit, depending on how far you want to invest in both of those engines, since when you splash in Virtual World, you don't necessarily need a full-on package because the space is just a little bit tight. Okay, moving on to our second interaction. This is probably one of my favorite ways to play the Virtual World deck, but it is with the Sword Soul package. Moye's reprint is hopefully on the horizon here soon, and secrets have really dumped down all the way to anywhere from maybe 18 to 25 bucks, depending on where you can find them. So a play set of Moye for 60 bucks plus the Virtual World core, that's not that terrible. Adding the Sword Soul engine as a buff to the deck, really, to try to keep it around 100 bucks will go a long way for you. Um, but I'll just showcase one of the main interactions with Sword Soul here, and that is just using it as a way to get a virtual name on board. The main way being through Taya, banishing a Sword Soul card from your grave, or a Worm, special summoning that token, making Baxia, using Taya's other effect to send a Worm from your deck to the grave. Specifically, it does need to be a level 4 or lower, because that is what Baxia can revive. Then you can use Baxia's effect, getting rid of itself, or something else, should you already have it on the field, to bring back that GG here. Um, and that's a really quick way to put a Virtual World name on board. Um, Sword Soul definitely helps the consistency in that way. You obviously have four other cards to play with, whether you already have Lulu, um, Lili, any of the other stuff, or even another GG since you haven't used that name yet. You have a lot of room to play, so that is definitely one really cool way you can use the Sword Soul engine for the deck. Okay, the next piece I want to talk about is just the overall synergy that Virtual World has being half of the more primary names in the form of both Lili and Gigi, both are Worms, so you can utilize that a good bit with the Sword Soul engine, I'll showcase that in a couple different ways. First is obviously Moye, you can use that to reveal either the GG or Li Li, because they are both worms, to then get your token and make Qi Zhao. This is a really good way to put some negates on board, get some interaction going before you decide to really commit to your virtual world plays, and then depending on how you want to do it, you're going to get a draw off Moye, of course, and then search with the uh, Qi Zhao for either a blackout or a long one. Um, in this case, since you're not really locked into Worms yet or anything like that, you don't really do that in this deck. Long one is most likely better to Special Summon, get the token, and then if you can afford the expensive option, Baron is always your go-to. Of course, there is Stardust Warrior and Satellite Warrior, both really good secondary budget options, but don't necessarily bolster a negate to insulate your lines of play. But either way, before even committing to anything, you now have a really solid Omni Negate plus a Monster Negate for your opponent's turn, and ideally you're going to have other cards to work with, and of course you can also use the Sinister Sovereign as another option as a level 10 Synchro, but again, really solid engine to get your 
pacing going really well before you commit to anything or just force your opponent to bait out a lot of their negates before you commit to your virtual world lines. Okay, the third piece, and this is probably the favorite thing I like abusing in the Sword Soul variant of Virtual World, is Heavenly Dragon Circle. Um, if you've not really utilized this card much, you see it in Sword Soul. They're usually using it as a way to dodge things like Imperm or Valor to keep their plays going. A really cool way that, that we use it for Virtual World is um, you can use it to dodge hand traps. You can also use it to play around Nib just because this deck does a really good job at not utilizing their normal summon. So really all you truly need is a way to get a virtual world name on board, whether that's Lili or GG, doesn't really matter. I just had Qinglong here as an example, dumping the trap, special summoning Lili, and then dumping another name for Nian Yan. Um, this is an example. You could be early on, you could be later down in your combo, but because you've not used your normal summon, you can then tribute away that worm on your board to then add a copy of any sword soul from your deck to your hand. Um, can be Taya, can be Moye. In this case, since I didn't have other cards in my hand for this example, Taya is the main one you want to go to. Again, banishing that worm and then that is now fuel for the nian yan you can then sink her away to make chi zhao and then you can still search if you wanted to dump something with taya you could but again that's just another way that we can really abuse the deck it's really really nice to do mid full combo then hit by some interruptions chain hit dragon circle and then just keep going Okay, for our next one is going to be Punk. I feel like you have to talk about this, especially with the insane support that came out in Power of the Elements in the form of the new Synchro and the new Field Spell. For now, we're just going to focus on the Synchro, and I'm going to show a really kind of awkward way of doing it, but just to showcase at the bare minimum, here's one way you can abuse the new Punk and fit it in Virtual World. There's plenty of other ways you will do much better playing a bigger Punk package, but I want to showcase something at the bare minimum just to get your thoughts going. You can obviously get Z Ammon, and then from there, you using Z Ammon's effect to get a Foxy from deck to hand. Of course, you can always add another Z Ammon if you're going off e -tally. normal summon it and make a virtual world rank three to get a name on board, but we're gonna do something a little bit different here. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Foxy tune, discarding whatever spare card we have in our hand. In this case, it is GG. And then we will special summon the Deer Note from our deck to the field. Synchro is a way for the new Synchro, the Jam Drive, uh, basically lets us add a level three Psychic from our deck to our hand. So Jam Drive will be Chain Link one, Deer Note will be Chain Link two, to bring back Z Ammon. And of course, we are going to add the best level three psychic in our deck, Lulu. And then from there, we can actually go ahead and link those two off into Halk. While it's still legal, of course, there's other ways we can do that. If it uh, does get hit, we'll get to that hopefully when we get a ban list any day now. Then we can use Halk to bring out another Lulu just for the sake of having a name on board. So right now, at the very least, while Halk is still around, this is one way you can both get Lulu to hand as well as a virtual name on board to then go ahead and do your full combo. Dumping the Ching Long, especially the Lulu, and then adding the trap. And then you just have the Ching Long uh, add live and you can keep going from there. Okay, and our last piece that we're going to talk about here is three axis. Um, basically, different level threes and ways you can abuse that kind of stuff um, in the deck, as well as some niche other things. You saw Hysteric Sign there. That is another cheeky thing that will come up here in a little bit. But um, the first thing I'm going to touch on, I did my most recent deck profile of Virtual World with this, which is the Symphonics. This is a new rank three engine uh, for the deck, not necessarily the way it's meant to be used, but I think it has a ton of amazing options with the deck. It's very cheap and gives you so much room to do whatever else you want at the cost of only four slots in your main deck. So you can use the Symphonic Warrior discarding a card to then special summon another symphonic from your deck in this case it is going to be guitarist specifically it needs to be that when it is special summoned you get to declare its effect to add the pendulum guitar back to your hand then you can normal summon it and there from there you are good to go uh, like the punk engine if you don't feel like investing in it um, this is a both tuner and non-tuner here so you do have the halk line available to you and there's a lot of other things you can do of course the most obvious one being a virtual world rank three a secondary option that you can do with this is getting rid of both to summon a chair or uh, sorry not cherubini halk of fibrax from the extra deck we'll get to cherubini in just a second yes i know these go in the pendulum zone uh pendulum scale um extra deck sorry <laughs> but um just for the sake of the example here so yes halk is still an option obviously to do that full halk line again we have access to that uh and the other option like i mentioned before i got a little bit ahead of myself is cherubini cherubini is really insane you can do a lot with this dumping cards like a virtual world name or you can even dump the brave package which is going to get you an insane amount of advantage again before committing to any virtual world plays um, and then one of my favorite things to do that's a bit more um, 
risky. It's a bit more susceptible to some stuff, but it's a very powerful line. And I think it's a lot of fun um, is you can make a card like Totem Bird or you can make a card like Harpy Conductor. Uh, so Totem Bird is two level three wins. That's both of what these Symphonics are. Totem Bird is a spell trap negate and Harpy Conductor. Well, I think we know that why both of these are here. We have a Harpy card or a Wind Winged Beast that makes our Harpy's Feather Storm live. So if you want to go this route, you can. You can literally use that to either do Harpy Conductor first before committing to your virtual world plays. Then if they have hand traps, you just activate it from your hand since you have that Harpy card. And then you just turn off all their hand traps for the entirety of the turn. Or you just save it and on a card like Totem Bird plus your virtual world combo. And then from there, you can just shut off all their monster effects on their turn, skip their turn, and then OTK them right after that. Um, I did mention a card like Hysteric Sign. That is also something that you can send from your deck to your grave with a card like Beatrice or something like that to then add this back at end phase especially if you've already ended on a card like Harpy Conductor again it's incredible just to shut off all plays on your opponent's turn and that is it for the virtual world combo guide I hope you liked it I hope something new or different sparked your interest I just wanted to take a step back and give this deck some time and some love that it deserves it's had a lot of different neat things come out uh, that support it indirectly and I thought it was worthy of touching on a few of these I like revisiting certain decks every now and then when stuff like that kind of comes out of the woodwork but nevertheless now that Moye is down I will be doing an updated virtual world deck profile here in the near future but with all that said, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you having you here, and I will see you all in the next one. Later.